merciful, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. I want to begin by um, thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing us with uh, this technology uh, to enable us to do uh, what we're doing. And uh, <laughs> only Allah is perfect. We have been going through some, some changes uh, trying to get this this broadcast started, but now that we have started, I am grateful for this. I am grateful to uh, Salam Media for extending an invitation uh, to their brother Salah Khan in the United States uh, to uh, begin a, a weekly broadcast around uh, some of the issues, the human rights issues and other issues that, uh, primarily human rights issues that we have been dealing with for years. And um, I am grateful uh, also uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to have as my first guest, my dear sister, Dr. Fauzia Siddiqui, uh, the uh, sister of uh, Dr. Afia Siddiqui, a, um, a, <laughs> a very accomplished Muslim woman in her, in her own right and uh, someone who is has been engaged in a uh, a very herculean work that uh, some it, it it staggers my imagination how she does it uh, on one hand she's uh, a, a a professional in a field that um, is very demanding and at the other on the other side uh, the other hat that she is wearing is um uh uh, leading, being one of the prominent, uh, in fact, the prominent leader of the international campaign for the freedom of her loved one, her sister, Dr. Afia Siddiqui. So with that said, um, welcome uh, to the first uh, program uh, in the series that uh, we, right now we're calling uh, a conversation with El Hajj Maurice Salah Khan. With that, we are welcoming our dear sister, from Karachi, Pakistan, Dr. Fauzia Siddiqui. Assalamu alaikum, my sister. Wa alaikum assalam, Brother Mori. It's very good to see you in a long time now. <laughs> yes, it's been a while. Yes, it's been a while. Um, I wanted the first program uh, in this series of programs that we're going to be doing, inshallah ta'ala, to be on our sister Afia. Last month, March 2020 marked 17 years for her wrongful imprisonment. I, I would like to remind my audience, our audience, that um, former U.S. Attorney General Ramsey Clark, who is now in his 90s and still with us by the grace of Allah, he described Afia's case as the worst case of individual injustice he had ever witnessed. I was present when he said those words, and it echoed what I had felt for a number of years before hearing those words. This for me was the worst case, individual case of injustice that I, have, I had ever uh, experienced, and it has weighed heavy on my heart ever since I've become involved in it. Um, with that said, uh, Afi is now in her 17th year. This uh, ongoing fitna, this this nightmare, living nightmare, has weighed heavily on you and your family. And today, um, what I what I'd like to do is is talk about how this has affected your family, and I'd also like to know, you know, how thing how things are with you all right now. Uh, you know, how is your mother doing? Um, I often get the uh, one of the most often questions I get is, how are Afia's children doing? And they're young adults now. Um, so let, let's start there. How is your mother doing? How are the children doing? And how are you doing? Um, brother, um, first of all, I would want to thank uh, Salah Media, Media for arranging this uh, program. And uh, secondly, uh, Afia's case, obviously, I mean, uh, let me put it this way. Just when someone dies, there is a closure. 
But when someone is, goes missing or someone is alive, you know that they're alive, yet you have no access to them. And what, whatever little um, news that you get is all bad. That is, uh, there's no closure there. It's just a weight on weight. So you, it's like you die every day and then you wake up the next day to live the same day again. And that is kind of how my mother is, go, uh, what my mother is going through. And I realize that, I mean, our mother has a great demand. And I realized that, you know, when I was in Dubai attending a conference and, you know, we were complaining about little things. We had everything. I mean, first class, everything. We had uh, business class tickets, everything, you know, and everyone was complaining of things. And I just realized that, you know, in all these 17 years, I never once heard my mother complain. Or say that, why did Allah put me in this? She's yeah. always, always said that Allah will do what is best for me and what is best for my daughter. Alhamdulillah. When she was shot, where were you? Where were we? We weren't there. Allah kept her alive. He has kept her alive for a reason. She's a test. She's a test for the ummah. And I just pray for the ummah that the ummah does what is right. And But she has never complained. And um, she just reads the Quran. And um, I mean, I didn't really realize that. And then I asked everyone around and people would come to visit. And you remember Altaf Shakur, he comes often and that. And I asked him, you know, you talk to my mother a lot. Uh, and have you ever? And he said, you know, come to realize that she's never complained. So um, by Allah's grace, I mean, what I feel is that, uh, you know, it is, uh, if anyone doesn't believe in Allah, they could see my mother and uh, have faith in Allah that how can someone keep so sane mm -hmm. despite everything? I mean, all night, you know, she hears a sound just by default. You know, she comes out, she says, did someone knock on the door? Could this be Afia? Mm. So yeah. that's how she spends it, it, her. You know, you know, it reminds me of, you know, when I visited you all, I think it was 2014 when I visited, yes, um, yes. seems like yesterday, but, uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, I've said on a number of occasions when referencing that visit at sitting with your mother, it was like, for me, it was right. It was like reading the ayat from Surah to Yusuf. Um, you know, the, 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 the weight of, of, uh, of emotion, the weight of, of, of grief, the, 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 the weight of missing one's loved one. It, it, I was reminded of those ayat, and yet, as you just stated, you know, your, your mother has been sustained by her faith, the power of faith. And, uh, you know, this is something that we can all benefit from and, and learn from. But, you know, with, with, and I know, I know that it has, it, has and is taking its toll um but i'm i'm glad to hear that uh you know in spite of the weight of this this oppression on her heart she's been able to uh to hold on you know and to um, be sustained last year, yes last year we thought that we were just losing her um yeah. she had uh, she was taken very ill and um, it was like every system in her body was just fading. And I don't know whose though it was and what, but she has recovered since. And But these days, but these days, these past two weeks, these have becoming very, very tough. I mean, with all the news, um, yeah. uh, you know, there are headlines and, um, uh, you know, um, even in the Pakistani papers, there are headlines that uh, uh, the coronavirus is breaking into American jails. And obviously, my mom has heard that and that has really, um, you know, yes. taken its toll on all of us, actually. Because uh, on the other hand, we were seeing that all the countries, even Iran, I mean, 
America says that Iran is probably one of its worst enemies or something. Yet mm-hmm. Iran managed to get their prisoners out of American jails <laughs> on basis of the humanitarian grounds and on the basis of health and health security. So I, I mean, it's kind of sad why Pakistan is uh, so. I don't even have the words to express the feeling that I sometimes get the frustration. Yeah, what is wrong with these guys? Yeah. Before getting into the <laughs> the question of what is wrong with uh, many of the leaders in Pakistan, um, let let's get back to your family. How are the the, the children of Afia doing? Oh, yes. The children, um, obviously, um, young adults. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, mashallah. Um, okay, so mashallah, both have chosen to go into medicine. Ah. Even though I tried to get Mariam <laughs> not to go into medicine, but she insisted. So. And, and why is that? Why is that, Dr. Fazia? Why, why did you want to dis- try to dissuade Miriam for, from going into medical school? Well, actually, um, I was dissuading Ahmed. He's really very good with mechanical stuff, and I thought he would, do, he would be a good mechanical engineer. And actually, he took pre, uh, pre-engineering, and then halfway through, he just switched, and he said, no, I want biology, and I want to go into medicine. And he scored good marks, and he got into a very good medical school here. And so he's now in the third year. Ah, so two more um, years to go, and he's going to be Dr. Ahmed. Well, and, um, uh, uh, it must be in the blood. Because your father was a physician, right? Your father was so, a physician. Uh, yeah, and, um, well, he, and so he's done that. And then Mariam... Um, She's she's very good in art and in you know fine arts and designing. You should see the kind of things she designs and you know even a, even a small simple dish she'll decorate it to make it look like you know Master Chef. <laughs> so so I was like you know you have this talent and you enjoy it so do what you enjoy. But yeah. you know she was I was like okay. You know, we even went to career counselor and, you know, I took her out and I said, see, you know, just don't do medicine for the sake of doing medicine because everyone in the family is doing it. Um, but uh, she just, we, we kind of excluded everything. So we were back to medicine. So then I got her admitted into medicine. She got in, obviously. Um, uh, so... I have now two kids in medical school who are, um, so that's it. She's in her first year, and I think uh, one week, she had just started, her classes had just started one week, and then everything was locked down, and so we're in a state of lockdown. So now she's having online classes, and this is the first in Pakistan. I think this here. Oh, have we disconnected? I am live, it says. Wait, 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 wait. No, we just. Oh, sh- should I? Uh... Thank you. Should I? Oh. The one that you typed, it's just uh, put your cursor on at the time. Okay. Are we, can you hear me, uh, Dr. Fazia? Yes. Yes, okay. I can. Okay. Alhamdulillah, we're back. We're back. We some, I don't know what happened, but uh, Alhamdulillah, we're back. All right. Um, 
this 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 <laughs> this uh, so technology. So when he asked me to go on talking, I talked for a while, and then I was like, maybe I'm lost, and then. Uh, okay. Well, we. I, I we you you ended at uh, you know trying uh, well I am, yes so now I have to how I, talented she is uh, artistically I think, which her heart appear apparently is in yes, medicine her heart is her her a uh, heart is in it and if someone wants something that badly I yes, think she is yes. going to be one of the best doctors in the world. Alhamdulillah. My last question to you, my, well, my question after that was, how is your little girl doing? She's not a little girl anymore. When I, last time I saw her, she was a little girl. How is she doing? Yes. What is she doing? She's, um, she, she's, uh, she's doing well. Um, and she's in the ninth grade. Okay. She's now in the ninth grade, and uh, she's uh, still deciding. She's thinking. She's like, I want to be a businessman, businesswoman. I want to be an entrepreneur, and. Uh, or I want to be a lawyer. So she's at that stage. She's at that stage. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Will you let her know that her, uh, in fact, all three of them, their, their uncle in the United States uh, sends his love and, uh, and best wishes for, uh, for, for them all. And also your mother. Give, you, give your mother a nice warm hug for me. MashaAllah. Um, and, uh, I'll also tell you something else. Um, I'm a grandmother now. My, my you, oldest son. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Is that right? I mean, oh. granddaughter. Alhamdulillah. How old so, is she? You know, in all of this, you know, life does go on. Some, it just it's weird. On. Right. It's, it's amazing, yeah. you know, that yeah. how, despite all of this, every day I think, you know, how am I alive? And yet there are so many things to be thankful for. That's right. And that's right. And, and, and that's precisely why, Dr. Fauzia, on this very heartbreaking subject, I wanted us to be able to share some, 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 some lighthearted. Some good, some good out of people. this. Yes, because life does go on. And, and, and we know, for those of us who have faith, we know that this is a test. What we're going through is a tremendous test. It's more of a test for some of us than for others, but it's a test. And uh, at the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that is in control. Allah ta'ala will have the last word. And, um, you know, those who remain faithful will be rewarded. And those who were the oppressors are going to be severely punished. And I'm, I'm reminded of something that Ali ibn Abu Talib, uh, radiallahu an said. He said, you know, the... the, the uh, Three classes of, of men, and of, of course this applies to women, are, are cut off from the blessings of paradise. Oppressors, those who aid and abet oppression, and those who tolerate oppression. So the oppressors are going to meet um, their due. Uh, and, uh, you know, but meanwhile we struggle on. We, we struggle on to try to establish justice, to, to try to secure the freedom of our loved ones. And um, you know, that struggle will continue, inshallah ta'ala, bi'inillah. Well, now, getting back to the, to, the, to the, well, before we get to the point of, of struggle, discussing the struggle, I want to know how you are doing. Again, you wear two really big hats. I mean, you're, you're oh, yeah. a doctor in a, in a specialized field, and that has its tremendous challenges, I know and demands on your time, your energy, you know, uh, your resources. And then on the other hand, you know, you are the, the, the head of this international movement trying to secure the freedom of your sister. I don't know how you do it all, but you, you manage. Allah Ta'ala has blessed you to manage and to manage well. Uh, it, it appears, at least on the outside, it appears. How are you doing? There is a third task, which is more difficult than both of these. Okay. And that third one is trying to be a mother. Oh, yes, that's right. And how could I, and how a could I have left that out? Yes, indeed. That's a first and foremost. A mother and a father. Yes, yes, yes. That's to, first and foremost. To these two children that yeah. are miracles for me. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. 
for me, the most difficult thing is, uh, you know, keeping that balance. You know, they're teenagers, right? Right. And teenagers uh, can't be just let loose. There <laughs> are, you know, I have to hold them back and I can't just give them everything they want. And, you know, there are times I have to be strict and, you know, and yeah. no, you are not going out late at night. And no, you have to come straight back home and, you know, things like that. Yeah. And, you know, um, sometimes there's something they want. And I say, no, this is not something. And, you know, and then keeping cell phones from them most of the time is, you know, the screen <laughs> time, limiting that. And it, you know, it's like every time I am like, you know, I have to, sometimes I'm like, you know, they don't, their mother isn't here, their father isn't here. Let me be a little more lenient. And then I, I just step back and then I have to every time, you know, for me, that's the biggest test. Yeah. That I'm, I don't want to spoil them. Yeah. I have to be, you know, I say, this is, they're my children. Yes. I have to do what I do with my children. I mean, right. uh, that's the best I can do. Even sometimes I feel maybe, you know, I've been more strict or maybe I've been more lenient. And that balance is, I find, the most difficult thing. Yes, yes, indeed. I mean, um, my goodness, yeah, yeah. Parenthood is, is the most... It is the most demanding, the, uh, the, the you know, it, and, and, and the most uh, beneficial at the end of the day. It's the, it's the most beneficial work that any of us could possibly engage in. And, you know, I don't know, I'm, I, this is probably not the case with you, but for me, the weight of of, of parenthood, the weight of what it means to be a father, what it means to be a mother. It, it, it became more uh, clarified for me, the older I've, I've, I've gotten. And, and the more I see of what is taking place in this, this mad world that we're in, you know, it really it's, it's a tremendous, tremendous task, just being a parent. Um, alhamdulillah. May Allah Ta'ala bless you for, you know, not, not just parenting those who came from your womb, but those who came from your sister's womb as well. Um, you know, may Allah Ta'ala bless you. And, and Allah, no doubt, Allah will reward you immensely for this. Um, and it's good to hear that they're doing well, that they're doing so well. Alhamdulillah, they're doing well. Alhamdulillah. Um, now, for the for the more difficult conversation. Um, as you are aware and you responded to that, um, that note I made in the presentation I recently did on Afia that I had reached out to the uh, Pakistani consulate in Houston uh, to try to get uh, some information on where they are in terms of their responsibility to Afi. I mean, they have oversight responsibility as uh, the consulate in the state where their citizen is wrongfully imprisoned. I wanted to know from them, you know, when was the last visit and, and you know, uh, what were you able to deduce, you know, giving the council general who replaced Aisha Faruqi, the benefit of the doubt to say that he has visited Afia. We don't know if that is the case, but giving him the benefit of the doubt to say that he has, um, what is her state? Um, and it, 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 it appears to me that, um, and you correct me if I'm wrong, that if he has visited Afia, they didn't report to you the outcome of that visit, or, or did they? Has, has there been a visit to your knowledge? Okay. Um, in December 2019, when he took over from Aisha Faruqi, he um, visited Afia because Aisha Faruqi was supposed to get the commutation petition uh, uh, form signed 
from mafia um but she couldn't she couldn't get a visit so she gave that to him to do as the first thing so he mm-hmm. did go and he got that signed he told me this um you know after i had sent that and he called me and you know he was trying to explain things to me so probably next time you talk to me uh, you know maybe he can uh, i can vouch for him a little or something okay but uh, anyway so <laughs> he got that signed and afia immediately signed she said whatever if if you have anything that can help me get out just bring it to me i'll sign it mm-hmm. so he gave it to her contrary to what uh, you know um the um the foreign office here was trying to say that afia is not cooperating mhm okay so she signed that so that so it's been now 3 months so then i asked him that you know um so she signed it will you share it with me or will you share it with my lawyers and uh, so that we can you know the commutation petition is there with the pardon attorney so um we just need this updated form so we can submit it and follow up on it because at this time on humanitarian grounds you know right now there's an urgency because yes. all the countries are taking their prisoners back so if we have this petition there we can get off your back as well mm-hmm. so um he said that he has forwarded it to the embassy okay inshallah taala i will uh, <laughs> I, w- i will be making my calls tomorrow to the embassy and uh right. in fact I, not in fact not, i will not only make a call i will i will go to the embassy and uh okay. do a personal inquiry inshallah tomorrow he actually um did ask for your number and uh, said that he will personally call you i don't know if he did or not we well, hasn't called me as of yet uh right. but um uh hopefully i will be able to see someone at the embassy tomorrow and uh hopefully that visit whether i see someone or not if they if, if i'm not able to see who i want to see uh by by virtue of me going to the embassy they they will get the message and uh inshallah taala he will hopefully get the message as well and you know i have a will- feeling that because of the covid situation they won't be taking visitors or at least they have the excuse for not taking any visitors um he did mention that he was going to meet up with afia um this march um mm-hmm. but because of the covid situation the meeting was denied so i suggested um why don't you get us tell them that you know give us a video call because right. i i talked to the right. i checked i checked with the prison manual the updated prison manual at carswell and right. they allow prisoners video calls and there's no reason their family is out of state that's right that's right and i was about to say there is absolutely no reason why athia should not be able to have a video call uh given the fact that her family is outside the country with the exception of her brother in in texas i mean subhanallah it, and and let me also note that i'm still going to go by the embassy because you know the embassy <laughs> has an intercom outside the gate and uh so they don't even have to be in the same space with brother salah khan i can be at the gate and we can communicate through the intercom but i'm going to go by there and we'll see what happens i mean there is no excuse for at least an effort uh being made by pakistani authorities to do something to get afia back home there's no subhanallah there, there's no excuse because i mean just to reiterate for people who may be listening for the first time afia was wrongfully convicted she was abducted she was rendered her children were taken away from her she was tortured um and uh, she was shot and then as a cover up she was uh, she was taken to the us right mm, and yes. uh, and the trial during the trial all forensic evidence there were no fingerprints no gun uh, no gunpowder residue um the forensic report said that the alleged gun was never fired and uh, the bullet holes that supposedly afia made um were actually present in the wall before the incident 
about That's I right. think a day or two days before the incident from a video clipping. So there was absolutely no way that Afia could have committed the crime that they allege that she did. And the other thing is the witness testimonies. You were at the trial and the witness testimonies kept differing. And it seemed like some of the witnesses were perjuring on themselves. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but despite all of that, she's sentenced to a horrendous 86 years um, in, a, in a shoe unit in a med federal medical center, um, army lockdown kind of prison um, where conditions are worse than a lot of other prisons. Uh, and, uh, and then she's not even allowed uh, contact with family. So in a nutshell, um, brother, do you think I've summarized most of everything and why we are insisting on her release is because of her glaring innocence and because of uh, the way the trial was arranged in that vengeful atmosphere of New York City. Absolutely. You know, I, as you stated, I was there for the entire trial. All of the evidence was in Afia's favor, you know, and, and, and not only uh, in addition to what you just shared, uh, Dr. Fauzia, the Afghan police commander signed a sworn affidavit, which was entered into the court record, that the prisoner never touched a weapon. She never touched a weapon. And uh, this was a crowded room. And uh, according to the um, her accuser, she fired off shots from this this rifle that she picked up off the floor. Uh, you know, and the, uh, the forensics didn't match up, as you stated, no fingerprints on the gun. And in this crowded room, she was the only one who was shot. Um, the, 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 the reason why Afia was shot was because one of the soldiers, when, when he saw her, when she, when she looked through the curtain, when they began to argue over custody, when the um, Americans... Uh, uh, were arguing with the Afghan police commander over custody. They wanted Afia turned over to them. Um, they didn't realize she was behind the curtain unshackled. And so when she got up from the chair that she was in and she looked through the curtain, um, he panicked. One of the officers uh, all pa panicked, jumped up, shouted, the prisoner is free and, and shot her in the stomach. And then the, the, what they ended up doing was uh, provided cover up uh, a cover-up story to justify uh, her having been shot. And then, in addition to that, they brought her to the United States in violation of international law. They were on sovereign Afghan territory. They did not have permission from Afghan authorities to remove this prisoner. And uh, 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 and so they, they brought her to the United States in violation of international law, and then they uh, they arranged this kangaroo court proceeding that um, was just, it, it was astonishing to witness. It was, it was painfully astonishing. All of the evidence was in her favor and the government star witnesses contradicted themselves so much under, uh, uh, under uh, oath that they should have been charged with perjury. They should have been charged with perjury, but they weren't. Unfortunately, the uh, defense team a very capable defense team that for whatever the reasons held back um, in their defense of Afia, uh, uh, they, they just didn't, they didn't cross-examine these perjured uh, witnesses the way that they should have. They didn't cross-examine them. They didn't put forward the kind of strong defense of Afia Siddiqui, a political prisoner that they should have. And at the end of the day, uh, the state got what it wanted. And, um, it's uh, it, it's 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 really a travesty, and you know I I know that uh, just recently Charles Swift, one of the defense lawyers, was in Pakistan. Uh, in fact, the, on the day that he did an interview, I got uh, texts from a number of my Pakistani American uh, uh, brothers who alerted me to the fact that you know. Um, not only alerted me to the fact that he had been interviewed, they sent me clips of his interview. And, you know, one of the things that really bothers me about uh, Mr. Swift is that he continues to blame Afia 
uh, for the conviction. You know, she sh she never should have taken the stand, and the re and her taking the stand is what resulted in uh, her being found guilty. That is a bunch of BS. Afia's taking the stand against the wishes of her defense team, against the wishes of the then tainted ambassador uh, of uh, Pakistan. Um, it, it was the one bright spot in that trial because she was able uh, to get out information that uh, was under seal uh, that otherwise would not have been heard. And uh, so it was the one bright spot. Afia didn't lose that case. Her attorneys lost that case. The combination of her attorneys not being as vigorous as they should have been coupled with, coupled with, the atmosphere that surrounded her trial uh, in New York City just blocks away from ground zero. And that's what uh, did her in. And, and uh, so I just want to set the record straight there on that. This is an innocent woman. All of the evidence is in her favor. For anyone who is objectively looking at the evidence um, and, uh, you know, but she is where she is because this is part of a cover-up. And it's, it's, a, it's a shame on those who are in a position to help her, in a position to bring more attention to this miscarriage of justice that is now 17 years in the making. It is a shame on them for not doing what they're capable of doing. And, and the shame begins with uh, Pakistani officials who are silent on uh, what uh, is, is still happening to their citizen, to their Muslim sister. Uh, it's a shame on them in Pakistan, and it's also a shame on those here in the United States uh, who keep silent about uh, this, this woman who is withering away uh, in captivity unjustly. But with that said, I, I'm sorry for going off on the tangent, sister, but yeah, I've been carrying this inside me for so many years, and I couldn't feel more deeply than if she was my own you, flesh and blood. You witnessed the trial. And yes, I did. I didn't ask you to. I didn't even know you at that time. It's when I read about your things, and that's when I contacted you. So you did it yourself. You have no blood relation, um, though now I feel. And I think, you know, this is one of the most positive things that have come out of Afia's thing that I have met. You know, there was a point that I used to think that, you know, uh, is there any Muslim left in this world? And then every time I think that, people like you would come up, you know, and uh, from all over the world, and they would uh, support me, and uh, they would uh, uh, give me the hope and the, the courage that I need to go on. But there's one more thing, uh, brother, that I think for um, our listeners that I would want to clarify, and that is Wikipedia. Everything yes. on Wikipedia is not the Bible, is not the word of God. I mean, how can you believe Wikipedia and not believe your own? I mean, especially Muslims, especially um, those who are... Um, who call themselves very practicing Muslims, and when they say, but Wikipedia says that, mm -hmm. and you say, I feel like, you know, they won't believe their believing sister in Islam, yet mm -hmm. they will believe everything Amanna Sadakna that Wikipedia says. Yeah. And that's shameful, you know, it, it is shameful. And I have said for a number of years now, I've been saying this, making this point for a number of years, when it comes to very controversial issues, especially political prisoners and political imprisonment in America, you cannot rely, you should not rely on Wikipedia. You should not rely on it because, you know, the, the, the folks who are able to weigh in uh, to um, providing those pages with information are folks who are quote unquote volunteers. Uh, and um, when it comes to issues like this, are folks who have an agenda. I would not be surprised to, to, to learn that pages that, uh, like Afia's page, like the page of Imam Jamil Al Amin and, 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 and others, and Afia's page. That page, 
that is the longest Wikipedia file that I have come across. And, and, and my sense is that there are a number of hands. It's not just one person. There are a number of people. And my, my gut feeling is that with Afia's page, you have people, propagandists, that are being paid to monitor that page and other pages like it on a continuous basis. And so if someone goes in, someone who is a registered volunteer with Wikipedia goes in and is and changes something uh, uh, on the page to make it more factual, they will come right back within a day or two and change it back. Um, exactly, exactly, because um, I've seen that happen. I've seen that happen. I was following it. And there are people out there who actually do correct the facts. And yes. uh, I mean, uh, God bless his soul, um, and may he rest in peace. And Andy, Andrew Purcell, yes, he indeed. himself did yes, that, indeed. if you recall, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. he said the same thing that uh, they just keep changing it anyway. So. And let this be a wake up call to those of you who blindly follow Wikipedia. When it comes to certain issues, when it comes to science and technology, yes, you can rely on Wikipedia. But when it comes to these uh, hard fought, controversial, cultural, socio political, cultural issues of the day, you have to be very careful. You have to be very careful when it comes to Wikipedia. And with Afia Siddiqui, I've long used the term wicked. That's what it is. Wicked. Uh, you, you cannot find truth. And, and so Muslims who, <laughs> who accept Wikipedia as the gospel when it comes to Afia Siddiqui or any other political prisoner, I would have to say shame on you. Shame on you for going against what Allah Ta'ala has said in the Quran, what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said in his Sunnah. I mean, one of the most... Uh, evident ayat in the Quran, reads in translation relative to this, if a wicked person comes to you with any news, ascertain the truth. Otherwise, you may do harm to someone, to an innocent person in your ignorance and afterward be full of regret for what you have done. This is from the Quran. And so, you know, please don't be following the dictates of wick Wikipedia when it comes to Afia Siddiqui. Yes, My sister. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, um, <laughs> really, it's, uh, it's not always easy to talk about what uh, Afia is going through and what we are going through. You know, it gets, it has its toll. How are you doing? How are you? How are you doing? Good. Mothering, um, mothering, doctoring, yes, yes. campaigning. Yes, so how are you I'm, doing? These days, these days I'm on call. I'm yeah. on call for um, a neurology. I'm a neurologist, so I'm on call at the hospital for neurology. So during the COVID uh, lockdown, well, obviously we can't just let all other patients. Someone had a stroke. Someone's having seizures. They need to come to the hospital. So um, so what we've done is uh, we've got two week slots. So these two weeks are mine in which, you know, I will be seeing all the patients, um, whether they have their COVID positive and they have a neurological issue or they're not. And, you know, separate them and uh, take care of them. So it is. And, uh, you know, the hospital, uh, the scene, uh, everyone in gowns, and masks and uh, you know gloves and everything it's almost like you're living in a scene from a sci-fi movie mm -hmm. like you know yeah. um, it's kind of creepy yeah. and it's ironic also you know i was thinking i was reading andy's email and uh, just going through some of the things and um, one of his emails just it's from i think 2015 when he went with uh, my brother to visit Afia. And in that, he had written that uh, when Muhammad had gone in to see her and he wanted to hug her, and he just stepped close to her. And a guard stepped in between and he said, at least three to four feet distance, keep a three feet distance, don't come close. 
I was just thinking mm-hmm. now the whole of America is at a three or four feet distance. <laughs> Isn't it ironic? Yes, it is. Yes, it is, sister. Yes, it is. And for those of you who may be wondering who Andy is, Andy is a blessed, he was a blessed soul. He was, he was, uh, I called him Brother Muhammad Siddiqui's brother from another mother. He was, he was, he was a brother. And, and uh, uh, he became, because of how close he was uh, to the Siddiqui family and how devoted he was to Afia, even when it, sometimes would, uh, as he shared with me, would create uh, bits of tension between him and some members of his family. Uh, He nevertheless, he was steadfast. Whenever I would come to Texas uh, for Mm -hmm. Afia, you know, if I, uh, if we organized a demonstration uh, in Fort Worth, uh, you know, or if we did anything else in the Dallas Fort Worth area, nine times out of 10, Andy would come. And, and Andy was someone who struggled with a very serious, a very serious health and debilitating health condition. In fact, he passed away uh, about a year or so ago. He passed away. And, and uh, th- those of you who were, um, who, who were with us at, at demonstrations, anyone that may see this uh, telecast from Texas who was with us, you may remember, you know, the tall, gangly, you know, he's very thin and very tall, always wearing a cowboy hat, Caucasian brother. And he would, you know, often he would speak at the demonstrations with a very, very raspy voice. That was Andy, Andy Purcell. And he was just a blessed person. When, when I first met him, it was in the courtroom uh, before the trial in the, in, in the um, motions hearings leading up to the trial. That's when I first met him and and uh, Mohammed Afia's brother uh, in the courtroom in New York City. Uh, whenever Mohammed was there, uh, Andy was there. Uh, again, whenever I come to, te- to Texas, um, nine times out of ten, Andy was with me, and um, he was just this blessed, very kind-hearted, very committed soul uh, who know who knew Afia personally and knew and knows. Uh, 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 Dr. Fauzia knows, uh, you know, the mother and, and he knows the family, Afia's family. And he was just very committed. He remained committed. He was a friend to the end. And, exactly. Um, the times like these, you know who your true friends are. That's right. That's right. That's who he was. So anyway, that that's who Andy Purcell was. For those of you who may be wondering, this reference to Andy, he was just a blessed soul. May Allah bless his soul. May Allah bless him. My sister, let's let's conclude yes, with given the fact that we are going to be dealing with this COVID um, nineteen issue next week and the next week's broadcast. We're going to be talking about this, inshallah. Why don't you share with us how this pandemic is affecting Pakistan? Um, first 15 days, I think, uh, um, were manageable, but now as the, as it's the first now, you know, um, factories can't pay workers if they're not producing, if there's no production, how are they going to pay the workers? So if two weeks off was okay and doable and, uh, Marshall is, I think a lot of the factory owners and all did pay their workers, even if they didn't come to work. But it's not going to be possible for them to do that unless they sell part of their assets or something, because obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's going to be more tough now if there isn't a lax in the lockdown. Uh, I don't think Pakistan has been hit that bad, and it would not have been if they had not made some certain mistakes in allowing, you know, not closing the border as it should have been and selecting people and bringing in infected people the way they did. I mean, if you were you wanted to bring them, you should have quarantined them. But instead of that, so there were some mistakes that brought it in here. But um, so far, we're not needing, uh, you know, um, extra beds outside or anything. The hospitals that we have are catering mm-hmm. to um, the disease. Yes, mm-hmm. it is very strong. We don't have the best of masks. We don't have, uh, you know, the best uh, 
parachute uh, gowns and all. We're just wearing those simple cloth gowns that we wear in the OT, in, okay. in the operation theater. But, you know, um, it keeps going. And, you know, all our doctors, um, three, do uh, three of my colleagues, um, doctors at my hospital have tested positive, um, being infected while trying to resuscitate and trying to intubate a patient. Uh, you know, the patient just struggled and pulled off the doctor's mask and, you know, kind of coughed right into him. So it was mm. unavoidable, mm. obviously, despite everything. So that's how it is. Um, uh, yes. Uh, now, if this continues, then people are going to start dying of uh, hunger, most likely. Um, they're going to get depressed. Depression is starting to set in. You can't just lock up teenagers and even take away most of their, because even Wi-Fi isn't so strong. Not everyone has smartphones. So yeah. there isn't much to do um, if you lock uh, them up. And then mm. uh, uh, I think uh, the economy, Pakistan can't sustain such a big lockdown for much longer. I don't think so. And yeah. I think uh, under these circumstances, um, and a lot of other countries uh, on the whole, and I think uh, the world after this is going to be very different from the world yes. that we see. Yes, it will be. No question about that, sister. Well, with, with that said, um, ours was supposed to be a 30-minute program. And uh, but I got word that hour. ours was ours ours was the last program of the day, and so they told us we could we could go longer. Um, I, I don't want to uh, uh, abuse that uh, yes. that grace. So, is there before we sign off? Is, is there anything else that uh, we haven't touched upon that you would like to share uh, before we sign off? No, brother, I think we've given our um, viewers uh, a brief um, something of uh, what Afia's case is about and what got her where she is. Um, I just want to request anyone who's listening and will be looking at this program later on, and I would just like to request that it is, if nothing, um, at least uh, you can all raise your hands in prayer and say a prayer when you pray for your own family, a prayer for Afia that yes. uh, may Allah end this ordeal and end it soon. We are worried about the corona crisis because I feel personally that governments use crisis for their own political and other ulterior motives. And um, trying to get rid of uh, high profile prisoners, what could be better than blame it on a natural disaster? Mm. And that is what worries me most of all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it's a, a sobering point to end on. I would, I would simply add to that that um, I think it's important to remind people of faith, irrespective of whether they are Muslim, Christian, Jew, whatever, people of faith, that, that you know, we believe as Muslims, you know, there's a verse in the Quran, no calamity occurs except by the permission of Allah. Um, this, from my humble perspective, this is a, a punishing wake up call for the world. Ibn Taymiyyah, Shaykh Ibn Taymiyyah, Rahimu Allah, he said, civilization is based on justice and the consequences of oppression are devastating. Therefore, it is said Allah aids the just state, even if it is non-Muslim, and withholds his help from the oppressive state, even if it is Muslim. When we look at the global community and the state that the global community is in today as a result of this microscopic uh, uh, enemy, this, this, this punishing enemy that has been, um, <laughs> that, that, that has visited us, it, it, it's, 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 it should be a wake-up call for us to really think about where we are as human beings, 
as nations versus where we're supposed to be. It should make us think, I mean, really reflect very deeply on our shortcomings as individuals and as nations. And it should be a wake up call for us to, you know, to get things better. Yeah, things are gonna be very different. Things are gonna be very, very different uh, when this crisis ends, no question about it. Hopefully for those of us who uh, take to heart um, uh, the kind of demands that this has made on our conscience, uh, you know, we will, we will be better for it. You know, at least a critical mass of us will be better for it. This is a wake up call. Uh, Afia Siddiqui, Imam Jamil al Amin, the many other political prisoners here in America, the wrongfully imprisoned uh, in uh, other parts of, of the world, including Pakistan, uh yeah. india you know uh, this is a wake-up call kashmir syria kashmir that's right it's, yeah, yes yeah. right syria afghanistan i mean uh, somalia occupied palestine especially gaza i mean it goes on and on the list goes on and on this is a punishing wake-up call for us we are being forced into our dwellings you know we're, we're captive within our dwellings and we have nothing on our hands but time, time to think, to reflect, and to hopefully be better on the other side of this international crisis. And let's pray that this will be the case and um, that, that, you know, powers that be and powers and principalities will wake up uh, and, and, and heed the call before it's too late. And um, we pray to Allah to Allah that our sister will be back home sooner rather than later. It's been 17 years, and this is 17 years too long. So I want to thank you, my dear sister, Dr. Fazia Siddiqui, for, uh, for, for gracing me with this uh, uh, visit for the, this inaugural um, launch of this uh, program. I thank again my brothers uh, and sisters in South Africa for extending the invitation to me to do this program. Uh, inshallah ta'ala will try to make the best out of it uh, and um, uh, we pray to Allah ta'ala to, uh, uh, to, to through these efforts uh, uh, enable us to impart some beneficial knowledge and um, uh, be part of the process for positive change uh, thank you may thank Allah ta'ala bless you again give kisses and hugs to everybody in the family even to Ahmed and your son <laughs> uh, from, from their uncle uh, in, in the United States. And uh, uh, may Allah bless you and protect you, Dr. Fauzia. And the struggle continues. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.